Mobile sports betting legal in the state of Ohio. BetQL here to help make you the most informed bets possible. See all of today's winners by heading to BetQL.com or by downloading the BetQL app. Claim your free three-day trial today. Head to BetQL.com slash news slash 92.3 The Fan for all of those exclusive sportsbook offers. He's Daryl Ryder. I'm Andy Baskin. It is always game day in Cleveland. We appreciate you watching on YouTube or listening to us on the Odyssey app. And again, Twitter, Instagram, you know us. At game day, CLE, Daryl. What uh, any other news or notes coming from uh, Browns camp on Monday? Oh, there's always news and notes from Browns camp here. I'll just uh, I'll go through the injury updates. How about that? Um, right. Let's see. Everybody's day to day, including you and me. Uh, David Njoku progressing. Of course, uh, he uh, was uh, was not out there on uh, Monday as uh, he continued to uh, uh, relax after suffering those burns. Miles Garrett. Uh, you know, obviously doing a lot better uh, since uh, leaving the stadium in the the, the walking boot. Uh, Garrett was on the field though uh, on Monday. Uh, he was participating in some stuff, so really hard to tell if it was a full practice for him or. Li- I, I I'm going to venture a guess uh, that he was limited in some capacity uh, once we got tossed out. Uh, Joel Batonio is working through something. Apparently, uh, he was on crutches last week. So um, that's not good news, considering uh, the state of the, the offense. offensive line. line. So Joel was on crutches? Yeah. Uh, so according to Mary Kay Cabot, he was on crutches at some point last week. Which, see, this is the thing. Like, So the Browns kind of got away with it last week a little bit because we had one day of availability, and we got two dudes on Zoom, and that was it. And then mm-hmm. it was my week. Um, and uh, I'm kind of used to like, you know, normal bye weeks or we got guys Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then everybody goes on vacation for the weekend. Uh, and like I said, we only talked to two players on Monday after that Ravens loss and uh, obviously Kevin Stefanski. And then I, we heard from uh, GM Andrew Barry on Wednesday. So uh, and again on Monday, uh, no open locker room again. Uh, we heard from Jerome Ford, uh, who was his usual talkative self. Um, he said, believe it or not, said fewer words than Nick Chubb says in his regular wow. availability, which is hard to do. Uh, and then um, and then we talked to Sione Takitaki uh, as well. But um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll 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 see what the injury report looks on, like on Wednesday and who's uh, participating and not participating. I'm not worried about David Njoku. He already played in a game after that uh, horrific injury. I anticipate. What if Joel? If Joel can't go, do we see Luke Whipler? What do we see? Uh, no, you're not going to see Luke Whipler. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say that you'll Nick probably Harris? see like Michael Dunn. Oh, Michael Dunn. Yeah. So. All right, another reason to be worried if you got Dorian Thompson or Rob or Robinson at your quarterback spot. Oh, I mean, you got Nick Harris having to step in at center now because Ethan Posick is hurt, right? Uh, right. And again, he's he's day to day and whatever and. Had they had to have played a game on Sunday, he would not have played. Wow. So read into that what you will, because Posick didn't practice on Monday as well. That's so we could come back with three-fifths of our regular starting lineup on the offensive line, right? Yeah. Jones, Teller, Wills. Mm-hmm. And Wills doesn't exactly instill uh, great optimism Confidence. for Browns fans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. 25% of the places like, Hey, the, you know, the guy you're looking for, it ain't me. He's over there. <laughs> let, let me, I, I, well, I got a ton of stuff that we're probably going to end up talking about in the next show, but I want, I want to ask you one other question. Cause I heard Dante Whitner say this on the afternoon show, former Glenville Tarblooder, former Brown, former Niner, former Bill. I mean, he was all over the place, former Buckeye. Um, he said that if the Browns would have figured out a way to get Kyle Shanahan, who he wanted here in Cleveland, in this situation here would be a lot different in Ky- if Kyle was still here. Oh, Whether yeah. Whether he coach or not. Uh, yeah, a thousand. I mean, God. I mean, this is, um, again, great moments in Browns history. Kyle Shanahan telling the Browns to F off after the Johnny. With a PowerPoint game. presentation. Well, it wasn't a PowerPoint presentation, but it was, uh, you know. Slides? Uh, it was just basically, here's 32 reasons why I want the hell out of here because you guys are a circus and I'm not. I am not going to besmirch my name and my reputation to participate in this uh, bleep fest that you have. That was on. after the great Johnny Manziel. Experience. That was after they had to bench Brian Hoyer because Johnny Manziel's jersey was, uh, you know, being sold in the team shop, and everyone and their mother knew that Johnny Manziel wasn't even uh, prepared for practice, let alone uh, for a game. But you know, 
that's what they did because that's what they were told to do by people who had no business telling the football people what to do. So uh, thankfully, those people are no longer employed by the organization. But think about this. Kyle Shanahan and Mike McDaniel, Miami Dolphins head coach, who is doing pretty damn well in Miami. See, here's the thing about the Browns. Like, they've had really good people come through that building over the years. And that's why I always make the joke that there's something in the water because when people come to Berea, they drink the water and instantaneously they become stupid. And they do really stupid things. Or and, they realize they're going to get paid a lot of money and it doesn't really make a difference and it's their retirement right. fund. And then they leave and then they go on to do uh, fabulous things because they're no longer drinking the poisonous Berea water. Um, see Mike McDaniel, see Kyle Shanahan. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, um, you know, one of those pivotal moments in Brown's history that we look back on and you, you, you I call them the WTF moments, right? Um, uh, that, yeah, that, that I mean, wow. that's it was. Wow. I mean, it was thankless like, football. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, I, I just, um, you know, I'm another Kyle Shanahan, I guess, revenge game. I don't know. Like it, um, but here's the thing that was, that was back in 2014, right? That was eight, right. years, eight nine years ago. Feels like it, yesterday when you lose all those games, Daryl. I know. It does feel like yesterday. But, like, at some point, no, we can't let it go. <laughs> I was about to be, like, the ultimate adult in the room and say, you know, at some point, you got to move on. At some point, you got to get over forward. it. But you know what? When 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 you've not had any type of sustained success, and let's be honest about it, the Cleveland Browns have had zero sustained success since 1999. We've been sold a lot of sustained success by a lot of these regimes, right? That's always been their justification for being <laughs> terrible. Well, we're setting up sustained success, uh, and that has never materialized. I mean, Kevin Stefanski has the most – he's the winningest coach in the expansion era. And he's like, what, two, three games over 500? How That's sad awful. is that? Yeah. He's the winningest coach in the expansion era, and he is average at best. Kevin Stefanski's an average coach. You know who's an elite coach? Kyle Shanahan. Kevin Stefanski, not an elite coach. Not an elite coach. Not, not even in the same zip code, conversation, whatever. Not an elite coach. Good coach. Nice guy. Not an elite coach. And you want to know why? Because he just got his ass handed to him by the Baltimore Ravens two weeks ago, even though Deshaun Watson wasn't on the field. You could have drawn something up to give your offense a shot in hell at competing, yet you didn't. By the way, the Ravens got healthy this past week, okay? The Steelers beat a healthy Ravens team, and you got blown out by 25 points. And the Steelers were dealing with injuries this week, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. The Steelers aren't exactly the fountain of youth right now in health. and what like so. That's that's kind of my biggest thing when I look at Kevin Stefanski's tenure here is he doesn't get the maximum out of his guys. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't get that, you know, uh, and and again, I like Kevin a lot. I think he's a good coach, but I don't think he's elite. He I've not seen anything from him in four years. that tells What me could guy. they do within the staff to make this team better from a coaching perspective? They without did it firing, without they, firing him. They did it. They hired Jim Schwartz. Okay. They did it. They hired Jim. I mean, Schwartz. a lot of people and want to see Van Pelt call the plays. You tell me. Is that going to make a difference? No, because Van Pelt's going to call what Kevin Stefanski lined up anyway. Probably. You, 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 so you, you see what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. no, I, I think that they've done it. So, um, and that is, I think, why Kevin is on the hot seat this year because they've done everything. They upgraded the defense, right? Filled all the holes. Offense right. is pretty good. They got the investment in Deshaun. What you hope does not happen is that this is a repeat of 2021. Starting quarterback gets right, starting quarterback gets hurt, and now your whole season gets flushed down the drain. Because when you look at this schedule for the remainder of the year, Andy, uh, seven of the final ten games are against teams that are currently below 500. So, so do they make a move before July, before the 31st, before Halloween? If they if they think Deshaun is not going to be 100% for the entire season. And there's the schedule looks favorable. Right. Everybody has two losses right now. You've kind of had a chance to check yourself. Could they make a move at the break? I, I think if there was a move, it would have been made. And not at the break of the deadline, sorry. No, if there was a move, it would have been made already, but it wouldn't have been by the Cleveland Browns. It would have been by the New York Jets. 
Hmm. If uh, disagree. No, I I agree with you. I I think you're right. Like, like what what move would there be for the Browns to make that the Jets have not tried to make or considered to make or whatever? Right? Because agree, yeah. they're, they're the I, ones I that know. like they needed to make a move two weeks ago. If you think about it, right? Right. So, um, I I don't foresee the Brown like if if Deshaun's injured for an extended period of time, uh, you know we're all going to be lamenting the fact that Jacoby Brissett isn't here to start and keep the boat afloat, right? It's a good point. All right, Daryl, uh, for our producer, Meredith Kane, who's always outstanding. We had plenty of good stuff to talk about today, and we didn't even get to half the things we wanted to talk about. So we will do that on the next edition of It's Always Game Day in Cleveland. He's Daryl Ryder. I'm Andy Baskin. Thanks for listening. We always appreciate you watching on YouTube now, especially because it's been, uh, been kind of fun to watch the numbers grow on that. But uh, we always will appreciate you on the Odyssey app.